Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back to a new episode of the Hot Girl Guide podcast. How are we doing? Happy Monday. If you don't know now, you know I am doing a seven day podcast extravaganza where I upload a podcast daily, like seven podcasts in a row. I did skip yesterday because it was Sunday. It was a day of rest and I was busy. (laughs) Well, I wasn't busy, but I had a call that went on a lot longer than I thought it would because I allowed it to and then by the time I finished that call I was just drained and I was like I'm not going to be able to give my besties who listen to my podcast my same energy if I am exhausted and I'm literally just doing a podcast for the sake of getting it up which is not me you know I want to put things of quality out on the internet And I don't want something to feel rushed or just doing it for the sake of it. And like me being annoyed and slightly tired during. I'm not going anywhere after the seven days in a row of podcasting ends. I'll just be doing two episodes a week instead of seven. (laughs) And I was going to do one episode a week, but I was like, you know what? This podcast needs my energy. So we're doing two a week and I'm very feckin excited about it because I'm excited to be podcasting and today's episode I'm so excited for today's episode on TikTok about a month ago I saw a video of a girl who lives in Australia and not she was Australian she basically made a video on TikTok and said I need someone to tell me that it's okay that I'm 22 23 and I don't know what I'm doing with my life I don't have anything figured out and that I don't really know what I want to do and she was like I just need someone to tell me that it's okay so I stitched the video now when I tell you this is the most low effort video I have ever made on social media I am not joking this video I was lying on my bed it's I'll put the video link in the show notes I was lying on my bed like with my phone like this it was like night time I was after the gym I was just about to get ready to go to bed and I stitched the video And I'm going to tell you what I said in the video in a minute. But basically, this video has nearly 700,000 views now on TikTok. It has almost 200,000 on Instagram. And out of all the content and videos that I have put up on the internet, this is the one that went crazy viral. And people were commenting being like, I didn't know I really needed to hear this. This video has made me feel so safe. This video has made me feel okay about my life decisions. Like people really opened up in that comment section and it actually kind of made me quite emotional reading it because I was like, so many people in their early 20s, mid 20s, late 20s are experiencing the same feelings right now. And I just wanted to put this episode on the internet for all of my people who are in their 20s right now or even late teens. like. People as young as 19 were commenting, being like, I feel like this. I feel like I'm behind. I feel like I'm a failure. I feel like I don't know what I'm doing with my life. I feel like I'm running out of time. So I kind of want to share all my thoughts on that today and just really be the big sister that you need in times of despair, in times that you're feeling like this, in times that you're feeling lost, in times that you're feeling like a failure, in times that you're feeling behind. And everything like that. So I'm going to try and formulate this the best I can so that it makes sense. But I'm going to start off with a story about myself because I feel like that's what people really resonated with in the video. When I was 24, 23, 24, 25, I can't remember exactly what age. Back in 2017, when I went, I moved to Australia and I was in that early 20s phase and I remember going to Australia without a real plan of what I was going to do, which was so fine. (laughs) That's what you're supposed to do in your early 20s. And I said I was going to stay for a year and it was coming up on the year mark that I was, you know, that my visa was when I was in Australia. And I literally felt this overwhelming pressure. I was like 24 turning 25. That's what I was. And I felt this overwhelming pressure of, I have to go home. I have to, you know, set up my business, get my life together, get everything together so that by the time I'm 30, I have everything down. 
And I look back now and I'm 28 and I look back now at my 24 year old self who felt this immense pressure to have everything figured out and have that answer of what I'm doing with my life and where I'm going. And if I stay in Australia another year, that's just a waste of time because my 30s are coming up. And once you hit 30, you might as well book your funeral. (laughs) Like that was the idea of getting older that I had that I had to have everything figured out by 30 and I had to be at a certain place in my life by 30. I don't know why when you are young, you have this idea that once you hit 30, it's all over. And now I am 28, 29 in about a month. I'm planning on moving back to Australia and I look back at my younger self and I'm like, I was so young. I had so much time, even if I spent the last five years in Australia from age 24 to now, I would still, and even if I came home now or didn't come home, I would still have so much time to make a million and one different decisions. So the first point that I want to start off with is what your 20s are for. And I heard this summed up really, really well recently your 20s are for creating the person that you're going to be in your 30s so if you're in your early 20s and you know exactly what you want to do you feel like you have it all figured out you feel like you know what job you want you know where you want to live you know what career you want you know who you want to marry you know everything and you've it all figured out realistically you're probably living a life that you think you want because of society or that you you don't know who you are yet and I don't say this to be condescending or to be like everyone in their early 20s is a baby and they don't know what they want and they shouldn't know what they want but it's not realistic to know how your entire life is going to look at any point in time in your life not even your early 20s because It doesn't matter if you're 25, 35, 45, 55, 65, 75, 85, 95. Your whole life can change in a second. Before 2020, we all thought we knew how the next year or two years or three years of our life would look. And if you asked us in 2019, what do you think the next few years are going to be like? You might have had an idea of what they want to look like and that makes you feel safe. And that's why we do that. That's why it's... It's safe for us to know what's going to happen next. But in reality, you can change your life at any point in time. It doesn't matter what age you are. You're not running out of time. When you are 20, you are so... When you're 20 or in your 20s, and I'm only talking about being in your 20s because I'm only 28. So I can't talk about being in your 30s yet. But I'm sure it's probably the same in your 30s and in your 40s and your 50s. You don't feel old. You don't feel like you're running out of time or that whatever decisions you made in your 20s, you're stuck with that life now. I can't imagine that's how you feel when you're in your 30s. But I feel like being in your 20s, there's just... I I know where it comes from because all your life you're in school, right? You're in school... You're in from age four or five till age 17, 18, give or take. You're in school. You know what every week looks like nine until three or four in the evenings. You're in school. You're with the same people. Everyone your age and the year below you and the year above you, they're all on this same path of being in school. You know when your holidays are, you know when the summer is, you know when Christmas is. So it's safe. You know, everyone knows, everyone around you is doing the same thing. No one's asking you, you know, what are you doing next year with your life? Because it's like, I'm going to be in school. But then you finish school and everyone has completely different paths. Some people go to college. Some people take a year out to travel. Some people go straight into an industry working. Some people go learning a trade. Some people want to, you know, settle down faster and maybe start having kids everyone starts moving into these different avenues and lanes of their lives which makes everyone feel uneasy because 
you're not going to be doing the same thing as your best friend. You're not going to be doing the same thing as your friends. You mightn't even see your friends as often as you did. The people you were friends with mightn't even be your friends anymore. So it can leave you with this feeling of being lost or not being good enough because then you start comparing your life to everyone else's, even though everyone else is on such a different path. When I was 18, I did not know what I wanted to do in college and I finished secondary school, which is high school in Ireland when I was 18. And at the time, you know, some of my friends wanted to be teachers, be nurses, like everyone had this, like, I'm going to college for this, or at least everyone in my friend group. And I was the only one who did not. I didn't know what I wanted to do. I knew I wanted to do something creative. I was thinking maybe like English and new media or something like that. And I was told by a guidance counsellor that media was a dying field. (laughs) When I look back at that, it's just so funny to me. I was told that media was a dying field. A dying field. Media. We were just getting started. Instagram was in its baby era. And this woman told me not to do English and new media because media was a dying field. Is that not hilarious to you? So... I ended up choosing European studies because European studies is a broad course and you'll get your degree and (laughs) you can go on from there. And your cousin, who is kind of similar to you, he didn't know what he wanted to do and he does European studies and he likes it and you're kind of good with languages. So go do that. And safe to say I did it for about a month, I think six weeks and I dropped out. So my period of time between 18 and 22, 23, that time that loads of people are feeling lost right now, my time was spent feeling that, feeling like everyone's in college, everyone knows what they're doing and I don't know what I'm doing, don't know where I'm going, don't know what's happening. But then what started happening was my friends who thought they wanted to be a nurse or thought they wanted to work in a certain field ended up switching or ended up not doing the course or ended up finishing the course and graduating and working in that industry and being like I don't like this and pivoting and moving and everyone started moving in their own little different direction but the time I had between 18 and 22 I worked so many jobs. I worked in so many different industries. I worked in retail, the service industry, PR industry, hospitality industry, like every different industry you can think of, I worked in. I've had so many jobs and that allowed me to not be like, oh, I found the thing I want to do for the rest of my life. No, your 20s are for being like, oh, I don't like that industry. I don't like this because X, Y, Z. This thing didn't fulfill me because X, Y, Z. This thing was boring to me. This thing, you know, and that's what I learned in those few years. But everyone in their early 20s is different now because I think a lot of people forget they had two years, almost three maybe, of their early 20s or of their late teens or of their mid 20s stolen from them by you know what happened in 2020 we're not getting into that but those years were stolen so you didn't have that time to explore or to navigate the world as someone in their early 20s so now maybe you're 23 24 now or 25 26 27 28 it doesn't matter what age in your 20s you are now you're feeling even more behind because you feel older and because you haven't had those last few years of exploring or you haven't had the proper college experience that everyone older than you had and everyone younger than you will have. And that is overwhelming. And I'm not saying it's not overwhelming, but what I'm saying is we need to give ourselves permission to be on a journey in our 20s. It's not, it's never about the destination because once you get to the destination, always, always, always the thing that mattered is the journey is how you got there. How you got there is so much more important. And 
your 20s are not a time where you should have it all figured out, where you should have loads and loads and loads and loads and loads of money and savings, where you should know where you want to live, where you should know exactly what career you want to go into. Of course, there are some people that are born to be something and they figured that out very early in their teens and they've worked towards that and they've got it. But they mightn't have their relationships figured out. They mightn't have their friendships figured out just because you don't have your career because that's what a lot of people struggle with, right? They feel like they haven't achieved anything and they're a failure because they don't have a certain career. Number one, I do think the idea of career is dying and I want to do a whole separate podcast on that. But number two, you might have really good relationships with your family. You might have built that. That's an achievement. You might have amazing friends. That's an achievement. You might have traveled and seen parts of the world and learned from exploring different cultures and communities so much about the world and yourself. That's an achievement. You might have lived in your per- in your bedroom, in your childhood home and not really went anywhere and not really had amazing friendships and not even had a relationship, but you might have learned so much about yourself. That's an achievement. When we focus so much on what we don't have and where we aren't and where we wanted to be, but we're not. And the idea of what we thought our 20s would look like, as opposed to what we have done, we rob ourselves of the experiences we've had. We rob ourselves of the good things by constantly focusing on what we don't have, where we are not, what we thought we'd do, what we're not doing, the relationship we don't have, the friendships we don't have, the place we don't live. We are robbing ourselves of all the things we do have because we're putting so much energy and stress on something that shouldn't be stressful. Your 20s is a time where you... Now, obviously, I know there's so much nuance, but most people in their early 20s do not have the same responsibility that someone in their 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s has, okay? So with le- with less responsibility comes more options, more freedom, more decision-making opportunities. You can decide on a whim to change career. You can decide on a whim to travel the world. And I know there's a lot of privilege that comes into play with making every single decision, but in your 20s, thinking that you have to have every single facet of your life figured out won't serve you. And it's so okay. I have gone through so many different avenues. I thought I wanted to be a makeup artist. I thought I wanted to be a a mobile app developer and do like coding and all that stuff. I've worked in all these avenues and if something doesn't work, I'm like, okay, what's the next thing? As opposed to being like, oh my God, this didn't work and I wasted so much time and I'm running out of time because I don't see my life as this ticking time bomb because if you view your life as this ticking time bomb and you set limits on what you can achieve at what age, some people don't find amazing success in their life until their 40s, but that doesn't mean that life up until their 40s was or is invaluable or that it doesn't matter because everything in life builds you into the person you are. Do you think anyone who has great success in whatever lane way in life they choose later in life, in their 30s, in their 40s, in their 50s, in their 60s, in their 70s, even in their 80s or 90s, anyone who achieves something that they've always wanted to do or who finally figures out the path that they finally want to go on, they don't look back on their 20s and think, my life would have been so much easier if I achieved this when I was 20. They think, thank God for those years because they brought me to where I am now. Your 20s are bringing you to where you're meant to be. They are bringing you on a path of 
self-discovery or success or motherhood or having amazing friendships or relationships. Your 20s are not the end marker. Your 20s are just the start of the journey. No one who wins an Oscar in their 60s is like, I wish I won this in my 20s. They're grateful for their 20s and their 30s and their 40s and their 50s for all those years and all those lessons they learned and all those hardships they went through that brought them to where they are now. I just need you to really think about that and really deep that. Really think about it. If someone told you at age 38, if you're 23 now and someone told you if you keep doing what you're doing and if you keep figuring yourself out and if you keep going through this journey, you will by age 38 know exactly what you want to do and you'll become successful at it. You would be so excited and you would live the life that you're currently living now and you would learn the lessons to bring you to that place. And realistically, the way I think about it is if you start your 20s on your 21st birthday with everything you want in life, everything figured out, like everything possible, you know exactly where you're going and exactly what you're doing and exactly how your relationships, your friendships, your living situation, your job, everything is going to pan out. You're not going to be an interesting person. (laughs) I'm not messing though. How interesting of a person can you be if you've never been through any sort of hardships or any sort of moments of figuring something out or any sort of moments of having courage and bravery and leaving a career or moving across the world or going through hard times in your friendships or your relationships or your home life. All these hard times, although they are awful and although Of course, it would be a lot easier if you had no hard times in your life, but the hard times are there so that you're a stronger person who can appreciate the good times. You are not behind in your 20s. And that's what I really want to enforce. You are not behind in your 20s and you're not a failure. Have you failed at some things? Yes. Has that taught you something? Obviously. You can't fail and not learn something. There is always a lesson to be learned. And when you learn lessons, your brain grows and it learns things. Also, your brain's not fully developed until you're 25. So the first five years of your 20s, your brain still isn't fully developed yet. So, of course, you can't know everything and do everything and be everything. And in the last five years of your 20s, your brain is a fully developed brain. It's an early version of your fully developed brain. You're a five-year-old adult at 30. You're not a 30-year-old adult because age zero to 18, you're a child. And age 18 to 25, your brain isn't a fully developed adult brain. You don't know everything yet. Your brain doesn't process emotions and things the same way at 18 than it does at 28. And even at 28, your brain has only been developed fully for three years ish. So I hope this podcast just gave you a sense of relief today and a sense of taking a deep breath and being like, you know what? It's okay that I'm 21, 24, 27, 29, and I don't have it all figured out because I'm on a path and I'm on a journey and I have learned things no matter what has happened in my life so far to lead me to this point, I have learned things and I have became a better friend, became a better communicator, became a better person in this universe and I care about things and I care about myself and I care about the journey that I'm on and I give myself the permission to explore and to not put myself under immense pressure to figure it all out because I'm pretty sure anyone at any age probably feels like they don't have it figured out. And that's kind of a secret to life, in my opinion. I think a secret to life is once you figure out that you don't have to have it all figured out and that no one has it all figured out and they're all just kind of winging it and playing this game of life, you can just relax your shoulders and breathe a bit more and be like, okay, it's fine. I don't have to be doing the exact same thing as everyone else. I don't have to be living the exact same life as all my friends because 
you probably don't want their life anyway. It probably just looks better to you because they know what they're doing. But if you had to live a year or a week in their life, you probably wouldn't like it. It's not who you're supposed to be. It's who they're supposed to be. And you don't want anyone else's life anyway, no matter how much you glamorize and romanticize it and look at it through rose tinted glasses. As the cliche goes, if everyone put their problems into a pile, you'd probably take your own back. And obviously there is nuance. And obviously there are some things in life that no person should go through. And there are troubles and there are downs in life that no person should have to go through. And I'm not eradicating your experience or anything like that. But what I'm saying is, in your 20s, you have so much time. You have so much time. If you're in your 20s right now, the life expectancy is probably 120 or 130 years old. So you probably have another 100 years to go. And it doesn't matter how many years you have to go. All that matters is this present moment that you choose yourself and that you choose to give yourself the grace and to allow yourself that you would give to a friend. If your friend came to you and was like, I feel like a failure, I feel like I've done nothing, I feel like I've achieved nothing, I feel like I am nothing, I've done nothing, I'll be nothing, I'm not going anywhere. I'm sure that you would tell that friend all of the things that they are and all of the things that they have done and the great friend that they are and the great person they've become and how they're not running out of time and they still have so much time. So I want you to say that to yourself. And give yourself the grace that you would give a friend or a loved one in these situations. As opposed to catastrophizing your life and thinking that you're running out of time. Because as someone who is 28, I would love to go back to my younger 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26 year old self. And be like, you have so much time. Just keep doing what you're doing. It's fine. You are fine. It's going to be fine. You're so young. And even at 28, 29, you're still so young and you don't have it figured out at 28, 29, but that's fine. And you feel fine about it. You, you feel fine because you know, no one has it figured out and that is all a lie anyway. So I hope you enjoyed this podcast. I hope it gave you a sense of relief and a sense of calm and a sense of hyping you up in the way that I really think is valuable. So yeah besties, this podcast was for anyone at any point in their life. It doesn't matter if you're not in your 20s, if you're feeling lost and you're in your teens or your 30s or your 40s or your 50s or your 60s. I really, you, you're doing amazing and you need to appreciate all the good things that you have going for you. There are good things that you have going for you and if you can't see them, ask your friend. And I'm sure your friend or your loved one or your guardian, or your parent, or your brother, or your sister, will tell you all the good things you have done, and achieved, and have going for you, and just talk to yourself like you would talk to a best friend, that's my best advice, so thank you for listening, if you found value in this podcast, please share it with a friend, or someone that you think is going through it right now, don't forget you can follow this podcast on Spotify and on Apple Podcasts and you can share it to your story on social media for free. Okay, goodbye.